Hi, in preparation for doing a review of some dark sweet cherries in heavy cane sugar syrup, I thought, well, how much fructose is there in cane sugar versus high fructose corn syrup versus corn syrup? Well, I couldn't, uh, I didn't immediately find information on corn syrup. However, for high fructose corn syrup, I discovered that high fructose corn syrup has 42 to 53% fructose in it. And I thought, oh, <clears throat> wow, that is actually about the same as things like cane sugar, <coughs> invert sugar, molasses, agave, honey, and several others. So what's the difference between a high fructose corn syrup and eating things like that? Well, in effect, there isn't a difference because they have about the same amount of fructose in them. In fact, when I looked for cane sugar, it specifically said about 50%. So there's a, there is a range, not just for corn syrups, but also for other kinds of sugar that have lots of fructose. Now, if you eat huge quantities of cinnamon, it is also 50% uh, um, fructose, 50% glucose. What does this mean? Well, glucose is the one that is associated with diabetes and re increased risk of heart disease. Fructose, uh, in contrast, is associated with damage to the liver because it converts the, the sugar it can't use immediately into one of two things, either into glycogen, which is the same thing that glucose is converted into. So that's adding to the sugar load in your bloodstream, or it gets stored in the liver as fat. Not good, because fatty liver is a, a precursor to cirrhosis of the liver. Cirrhosis of the liver is where your liver is damaged and either, if they can, if it's still possible, they can cut off the part that's decayed and the liver will, the rest of the liver will grow back. You can lose two thirds of your liver, I believe, and it'll grow back. But if it's too damaged, you'll need a liver transplant. Like if you get hepatitis, hepatitis destroys your liver. There's no way to, to just regrow it. it it's, it's gone, you have to get a new one. Um, but fructose fortunately doesn't work that way. So what do you do? Well, if you are insisting on using sugar products for whatever reason, um, you should be avoiding cane sugar, honey, agave, invert sugar, molasses, um, cane, uh, sorry, high fructose corn syrup, corn syrup, and a lot of other nat natural sugars um, because they're not going to be good for you. Unfortunately, that's, that's a problem because the vast majority of, say for example, uh, sodas are made with either high fructose corn syrup, like Coke and Pepsi both use that, or they are made with cane sugar. And I'm, it really boils down to almost exactly the same thing. You're poisoning your body. Number one, sugar is highly addictive, more addictive than um, cocaine is. Number two, uh, these sugars are doing damage to your to your body in multiple ways, and uh, as well as the addiction. So, what should you do then? Well, you should reduce. You know, and it's gonna if you're addicted, this is gonna be hard. So there are two levels of addiction. There's like an official like you're, an, you're a food addict. And in that case, you need to explore things like morphine blockers with your doctor because some people who have food addiction can be helped to get off of junk food and fast food and such by getting onto morphine blockers. They'll be able to get into a normal way of eating and maybe you'll have to reset your uh, gut biome, uh, maybe even have a fecal transplant and so on and so forth. Um, the alternative is look into artificial and alternative sweeteners. Thanks for watching and I hope you have a great day. So to add to that, um, there was a study done and uh, it was a 
comparative study. This was published in uh, Pub PubMed on the National Institutes of Health's website, NCBI, NLM, NIH.gov. And the, um, the, the uh, study was called, let's see, Synergistic Effects of Fructose and Glucose on Lipoprotein Risk Factors for Cardiovascular Disease in Young Adults. So in simple terms, they compared fructose, glucose, high fructose corn syrup, and aspartame, and discovered how each of those affected the participants. And this was back in 2021, I believe. No, 2020. And there was a correction made in 2021. All right, so I'm going to read the, the, um, the background. Fructose consumption increases risk factors for cardiometabolic disease. Cardio, the heart, meta metabolism is our ability to process food and beverages and extract energy, vitamins and minerals and so on from them. <clears throat> it is assumed that the effects of free sugars on risk factors are less potent because they contain less fructose. We compared the effects of consuming fructose, glucose, or their combination, high fructose corn syrup, on cardiometabolic risk factors. And the participants were ages 18 to 40 years old. B body mass index, which you know we now, uh, it now has been admitted by the scientific computer, computer, the community as being rubbish by itself, uh, between 18 and 35 kilograms per meter square. Okay. Um, they participated in a parallel, double-blinded dietary in intervention during which beverages sweetened with aspartame, glucose, 25% of energy requirements, fructose, or high fructose corn syrup, 25% and 17.5% uh, respectively for the energy requirement, were consumed for two weeks. So this is a short-term study. Um, groups were matched for sex baseline BMI and plasma lipid slash lipoprotein concentrations. Now lipo or lipid, that means fat. 24 hour serial blood samples were collected at baseline and after the intervention. Primary outcomes were 24 hour, which means they're, they're tracking these things. 24 hour triglyceride, AUC, I'm, um, I'm not sure what the AUC part means, LDL cholesterol, C, and apolipoprotein, or ApoB for short. Interactions between fructose and glucose were assessed post hoc, post meaning after. Um, so there were 145 subjects. So again, this is a short term, fairly small study, but we're talking about 145 subjects that completed the study. So there were others that dropped out for whatever reason or were asked to stop because of health concerns, maybe. Um, 26 plus or minus 5.8 years, body mass index 25 plus or minus 3.7 kilograms per meter square. And as expected, the increase of 24-hour triglycerides compared with aspartame was highest during fructose consumption. Uh, so that's, that's one of the consequences of consuming pure fructose in its unconstrained or form, which is, which is to say not within fruit. Intermediate, it was intermediate, the triglycerides were intermediate during high fructose corn syrup consumption. So we're talking about with the fructose, it was 6.66 mmol per liter. And it was 4.68 mmol per liter for the high fructose corn syrup. 
and it was lowest during glucose consumption. Doesn't say what the uh, amount was, though. In contrast, the increase of LDLC was highest during HFCS consumption. Now, H, uh, LDLC and triglycerides both have a role in cardiovascular uh, problems, or CVD, uh, cardiovascular disease, CVD. So, the increase of LDL was highest during high fructose corn syrup consumption, 0.46 mmol per liter, and intermediate during fructose consumption, 0.33 millimeters per liter, mmol per liter, as was the increase of ApoB. For H uh, high fructose corn syrup, it was 0 0.108 grams per liter. For fructose, it was 0 0.072 grams per liter. And so the post hoc analyses showed significant interactive effects of fructose and glucose on LDLC and ApoB, but not on 24-hour triglyceride. Now, ApoB is a very important marker, just like LDLCs, which are the one, the LDLs that are most associated with heart disease, um, and triglycerides are also an important fact um, marker. So the conclusion is a significant interaction between fruco fructose and glucose, contrib which is through the high fructose uh, corn syrup. And that would also apply to other, most other sugars, because most other sugars have a combination of fructose and glucose in them, except for pure fructose or pure glucose. Um, okay, so significant interaction. Significant is different from what it means in normal English. Significant isn't like a large thing, um, but there is a significant interaction which contributed to increases of lipoprotein protein risk factors when the two monosaccharides, which are fructose and glucose, or monosaccharides, uh, and sucrose is the other one, were co-ingested as high fructose corn syrup. Thus, the effects of high fructose corn syrup on lipoprotein risk factors are not solely mediated by the fructose contact, content, and it cannot be assumed that glucose is a benign component of high fructose corn syrup. Our findings suggest that high fructose corn syrup may be as harmful as isocaloric amounts of pure fructose and provide further support for the urgency to implement strategies to limit free sugar con consumption. Which is to say that if you are consuming fructose or you're consuming high fructose corn syrup or you're consuming cane sugar or honey or invert sugar or agave um, or molasses and a, and a bunch of others, you're getting both fructose and glucose, somewhere in the range of 40 to 50 some percent fructose. And that's not good. So unless you have a genetic predisposition to not having problems with large amounts of sugar, which is not a lot of people, you might get diabetes if that run, runs in your family. But if that doesn't run in your family, you might have an, a, other kinds of problems you can get all kinds of dis metabolic disorders from overconsumption of sugar, of fructose, of glucose, of sucrose. Not sucralose, not aspartame, uh, sweeteners, uh, the artificial sweeteners and the sweetener substitutes uh, in general are very safe. So, but I'm talking about sugar. So I just wanted you to be aware of this and keep this in mind. If you want uh, to reduce your sugar intake and you want something less sweet, go with erythritol, which is the safest of the sugar alcohols for human consumption, although some people do have problems. There's a minority of people who have problems with it. So if you notice that you're having problems, um, then you should consult a doctor. The other one is sucralose. Sucralose, also for a minority of people, causes problems. Again, see your doctor if you think you're having problems with the sucralose. Sucralose is very, very, very sweet, and if you take more than a tiny amount, it's also bitter. So I use a tiny scoop that's smaller in terms of like the, if you imagine my fingernail, 
and you imagine half that size for the size of the little cup that I use, and I only usually fill it halfway if I'm doing like a two-cup personal um, smoothie. It's that strong. You can also use stevia and monk's fruit or luo han, han, luo han guo. That's the Chinese name for monk, monk fruit. Those are excellent also to be used um, for a sweetener. But be careful because a lot of companies put in dextrin and maltodextrin and other things that are going to spike your blood sugar. Okay, so that's it. I'm done. Just wanted to make sure you understood all this stuff. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, share, and if you can, comment. It would really help me out. And uh, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Hi. Thank you for watching my video. And I'm, I hate doing this, but things have gotten pretty uh, sketchy with my employer. And um, without going into all the details, which I have covered at other times, um, at least in part, I need some financial assistance. If you have the opportunity to do so, that's great. If you don't, even if you can just put in a, a word of support in the comments, that helps. To to have even just that is, is good. Uh, but financially, uh, I need to be able to carry on doing what I'm doing with these channels. Not so much this channel, uh, not, I'm sorry, not so much the Eclectician channel, which is mostly just me learning about stuff and sharing it with you but with my Glenn's Fast Reviews channel where most of what you see that I review I've purchased myself or I've gotten at a food pantry or somebody gave to me because they know I do reviews but I have invested huge amounts of money in it and at this point with uh, a little over 1800 uh, viewers um, I'm earning maybe $125 a month which doesn't cover the cost of what I've done, let alone the ongoing cost. And then even worse than that is my third channel that's at my, is uh, the PC Expert Amateur, which I have invested a large sum of money, money that I should have been saving for my retirement um, because I wanted to be able to present a lot of information about uh, fans and air coolers and water coolers for computers and other things as well. And in order to do that, I had two choices. I either had to make deals with manufacturers and sell my soul or stick to my ethics and pay for things myself in order to not be beholden to somebody and not feel like, oh, I owe them. Um, so, yeah, it's it's pretty costly and with the situation with my employer Amazon in which uh, the workers compensation company Sedgwick refuses to fix my shoulder which was injured at work over a period of months last year because Amazon's management refused to abide by their own policies to provide me support um, I may end up having to pay for the surgery myself with the help of my insurance and that will still be very expensive. And then uh, I would be out of work for at least a month. So switching to another job, it would be hard because if I come to you and you and I say, hey, um, I, really, I wanna work for you and you're like really interested in me and then I say, oh, by the way, in the near future I'm gonna be having a shoulder replacement so um, I will probably be out of work for a month. You're probably gonna say, uh, I'll pass, thanks though which would actually be illegal and you won't tell me that's why you're not choosing me but you know it is a problem especially with me being as old as I am I'm 50 I'm almost 58 so if if you could please if you can either go to the uh, my YouTube channel Glenn's Fast Reviews and you can make any kind of a donation on there any size any time you want um, through that because that's my monetized channel or you can go to patreon.com, that's P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash Glenn M-I-I. -I. That's G-L-E-N-N-M-I-I. -I. And you can make a recurring donation 
Um, and the smallest one I have on there right now is uh, $10. If that's too big uh, for you to give on a monthly basis, let me know. I can always add a smaller one than that. Um, you know, I just need to know. Um, but again, I, I, if you are financially strapped, please don't send me money. I don't want somebody else getting into trouble financially just to help me. Um, that would weigh very heavily on my conscience. So thanks again for watching this video and, uh, let's make the world a better place.